Hi, I'm Bill Lauritsen, and I'm just arriving at beautiful Venice, California, Venice Beach. A lot of people come here to enjoy the sun and the sand, but I'd like to take a look here today at how a scientist might view this beach. I have some ocean water here now, and a couple things a scientist might be interested in would be seeing if there's any harmful bacteria in the water here. Because if there is harmful bacteria, then the people, they need to shut down the beach. And that bacteria sometimes runs off from the, from the land. Also, certain pollutants may run off from the land and be in the water. So these are of concern to scientists. Finally, there may be new species of microorganisms that, that may be uh, of interest to scientists. This is a very interesting area. This is a protected breeding area for the California least tern. And I didn't know what would be here, but there's a lot of activity going on. And of course, this fence here is to protect them from predators, to keep humans out. And hopefully there's, there's some breeding going on here. So this is another area of interest to scientists. Hi, I'd like to tell you a little bit about my own personal journey through science. And it started out, I was actually majored in psychology, or what now we call cognitive science. But when I graduated, I began to teach mathematics. And I taught mathematics for many years, but I've always been interested in the social sciences. Now, when I came to Southern California and I experienced the ground shaking, this got me interested in, in earthquakes and understanding the motion of the earth, the plate tectonics, and from there it led to a curiosity about volcanoes. And I began to combine my study of anthropology and archaeology with the study of geology. And really that's been my journey in a nutshell through science, ending with a book that I just wrote recently, which is on the origins of scientific thought. Here we have something interesting, a globe, and this is a little demo that, that I thought of myself. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this compass and I'm going to point it, orient it to the north, so I'm doing that right now, and I have north in that direction. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the globe, here's north on the globe, and I'm going to point that also to the north. Now, since here I am in Southern California, I'm in Los Angeles, I'm on the Earth, I'm going to take this globe and put Los Angeles on the top also. So there's Los Angeles, and now I've oriented this little globe so that it mimics the big globe that I'm kneeling on right now. It's, uh, now why did I do that? Well, what's interesting is that the little globe is only 4,000 miles from the center of the Earth. And compared to the distance to the sun, that is minuscule. Because the distance to the sun is 93 million miles. And there's the sun up there. So what this means is we can look at this small globe and see what's going on with the big globe that I'm kneeling on. And, uh, we can look and we can see that in this area of the Earth is all going to be in darkness right here, whereas this area of the Earth over here is all going to be in sunlight. The pelicans here in Southern California, throughout the California coast, have had a rough time. And throughout the 20th century, they've almost gone extinct. The first time was when people were looking for their feathers. The second time was when people were getting their eggs and using them as food. The third time was when fishermen decimated their food supply. And the most recent threat to their survival has been through a pesticide known as DDT. And what was found is throughout the 1960s that their eggs were being formed with too thin of a shell and scientists found that that was due to the DDT in the environment. And in 1972, DDT was banned. And since that time, the pelicans have slowly been coming back. 
so that now there's between 5,000 and 10,000 breeding pairs. There's a lot going on here in Southern California geologically. What's happening is there is a plate that goes all the way around the Pacific, uh, up here, down through Japan and Australia, and then around back up through South America to where we are now. This whole plate is called the Pacific Plate. And what's happening is this whole plate is slowly rotating in this direction. So very slowly, what's happening is parts of Los Angeles are going to be up near San Francisco, but it's going to take 25 million years. Uh, it's beyond our comprehension how, how slow it's happening. But that rotation is creating a lot of activity. All the mountains around here in Southern California, the many earthquakes we have is a result of this, of this rotation. A physicist would find this area very interesting. There's three sources of energy that we could tap into, three sources of clean energy, and that is very important in this era of global warming. One energy source here in Southern California would be from the sun. There's lots of photons coming down, and we could use that motion to make our own energy. Energy to a physicist is basically motion and we have lots of motion of these photons coming down here every day. Other areas of motion here are the ocean. Um, every day we have many waves coming in. The motion of that waves could be translated into energy for us. A third area would be the wind. Every day here in Southern California, almost every day, we get a huge amount of wind coming ashore. And the reason for that is there's a huge desert, the Mojave Desert out there, and the land always heats up faster than the ocean. And as that land is heating up, the air above it rises and causes the air over the ocean to be sucked in. So every afternoon we get a huge amount of wind coming in, and all that wind could be used for energy, for electricity. Okay, another area of interest geologically is a site beneath the ocean, maybe a few hundred miles south of here, where about 25 years ago, scientists discovered volcanic vents on the ocean floor. And this is an area where, where magma is coming up from the bottom of the ocean. And this is very important because for the first time, we found life living off of the energy that's coming from the interior of the Earth. Before that, the only life forms we knew of got their energy from the sun. Now, why is that important? Because there could be life existing on other planets, on moons within our solar system that is living off the interior geological energy of the moon. Another thing I want to talk about is the sun and the earth, the relationship between the sun and the earth, because a lot of people have a misconception about that. And what's occurring is this earth is rotating. The sun is not moving. A lot of people will look up at the sun and say the sun is traveling across the sky, or the sun is rising, or the sun is setting. But we've known for 400 years that the sun is not moving. The sun is at the center of the solar system, that right there is the center of the solar system and the earth is rotating right now in space so that we we think that the sun is moving but that is due to a faulty mental model that we have and i think over the next couple hundred years uh, that model will be changed so that's what i wanted to say